Category O, Lecture 19, Joseph's Completion. Let us start with describing our setup. Let G be a semi-simple finite dimensional complex Lie algebra with a fixed triangular decomposition into the negative part N minus, the Cartan subalgebra H, and the positive part N plus. Let W denote the Weyl group. Associated to this triangular decomposition, we have the BGG category O and its principal block O0. This principal block admits a graded lift, O0 upper Z, and we have the following structural modules in O0. They all are indexed by elements in W, and we have simple modules in decomposable projectives, in decomposable injectives, Verma modules, dual Verma modules, and in decomposable tilting modules. We also have the monoidal category P00 of projective endofunctors of O0. In decomposable projective functors are naturally indexed by the elements in W, and we denote by theta W the indecomposable projective functor, which is uniquely defined by the normalization that it sends the indecomposable projective module PE to the indecomposable projective module P. W. In order to define Joseph's completion, we need to recall the category of Harish Chandra bimodules and the associated Bernstein Gilfand equivalents. Let Chi denote the central character of the trivial G module LE. Let M be the kernel of Chi. This is a maximal ideal in the center of the universal enveloping algebra. We denote by H the category of all Harish Chandra GG bimodules. So these are finitely generated bimodules, which are locally finite with respect to the adjoint action of G, and moreover, all multiplicities of simple modules with respect to this adjoint action are finite. So we have H00, one infinity, this is a full subcategory of the category of all GG bimodules, which consists of all bimodules X that are finitely generated, locally at finite with finite multiplicities. So combined together, this means that elements in this subcategory are Harish Chandra bimodules. Furthermore, these bimodules should be killed by our ideal M on the right, and the action of this ideal on the left should be locally nilpotent. For G modules M and N, we denote by LMN the maximal locally at finite sub-bimodule of the GG bimodule given by all linear maps from M to N. So now we can recall the bernstein gilfand equivalence. It claims that the functor of taking these locally at finite homomorphisms from the dominant Verma module to some module. And this is a functor from O0 to the category H001 infinity. And the adjoint functor tensoring over UG with the dominant Verma module delta E which is a functor from H001 infinity to O0. So these two functors are mutually inverse equivalences of categories. Now we are ready to define Joseph's completion. We fix a simple reflection S. Definition, Joseph's completion JS of O0, corresponding to this simple reflection S, is defined as the following endofunctor. So we first take the functor L from delta S to blank, and then we tensor over UG with the dominant Verma module delta E. Note that the first part of taking locally at finite homomorphism from delta S to blank, so this is a functor from O0 to H001 infinity, 
this functor is left exact. It's a subfunctor of the home functor. And the second part in the definition, tensoring over UG with delta E, this is a functor from Harish Chandra by modules to O0. This functor is exact. In fact, this is a part of the BG equivalence. Consequently, Joseph's completion JS is a left exact functor. So this functor was defined by Joseph in his 82 paper, the and right functor on the bernstein wilfand wilfand category O. So let us first discuss how Joseph's completion functor relates to the identity functor on O. Recall that there is a unique up to a non-zero scalar, non-zero map from the Verma module delta S to the Verma module delta E. Let us denote by alpha the simple root corresponding to our reflection S. Let P be the corresponding parabolic subalgebra of G. It contains the Borel subalgebra H plus N plus and additionally the root subspace G minus alpha. Then we can consider the corresponding parabolic category O, P. The quotient delta EP of delta E by delta S is exactly the dominant standard or projective object in the parabolic category O, P in fact, in the principal block O0P of this parabolic category. We also have the dual Zuckerman functor ZS hat from O to OP. This is a functor of taking a maximal submodule for a given module, which is contained in OP. So the theorem due to Joseph, there is an exact sequence of functors zero goes to the dual Zuckerman functor ZS hat. This embeds into the identity functor Zeta E, and further this goes to Joseph's completion JS. Before we can discuss the proof of the theorem, let us recall some useful tools from Harish Chandra by modules. Recall that for a simple finite dimensional G module V and G modules M and N, we have the following sequence of isomorphisms. Home over G from V to the G module LMN, considered as a G module under the adjoint action, is isomorphic to G homes from V tensor M to N, and this is isomorphic to G homes from M to V dual tensor N. Given any parabolic subalgebra P containing H plus N plus, let I denote the annihilator of the dominant Verma module delta E P in the corresponding parabolic category O. Denote by H I zero infinity, the full subcategory of H zero zero one infinity consisting of all bimodules killed on the right by the ideal I. Then we have the following variation of the bernstein gilfand equivalence, now for the principal block of the parabolic category O0, P. So the functors L from delta EP blank and tensoring over UG with delta EP are mutually inverse equivalences of categories between the block O0, P and the category HI, zero infinity. So now we can prove Joseph's theorem. Let us apply in the contravariant argument, the left exact bifunctor L blank blank tensor over U of G with delta E to the right exact sequence delta S goes to delta E with the quotient delta EP and this goes to zero. In fact, this is a short exact sequence but since we apply a left exact bifunctor, then the sequence which we get will only be left exact. So we get the left exact sequence, zero goes to L delta EP blank, tensor over UG delta E, this goes to the identity, and this goes to Joseph's completion. So we have this left exact sequ sequence of functors, and we need to prove that this complicated functor in the middle 
is isomorphic to the Zuckerman functor. Since the dominant parabolic projective is exactly delta EP, the functor L from this module to blank followed by the equivalence back to category O is the identity on the parabolic block O0P. So this follows from our analog of the BG equivalence for O0P up to a P sign on delta E, which is exercise one for this lecture. Also note that if we take L from delta EP to LW, where LW is not in the parabolic category, we get zero. So this is because for any projective functor theta s, the image of delta EP under theta s is in O0P and LW is not. So the G home from this translation of delta EP to LW is zero. So this implies that this image is zero and hence, this functor, which we are interested in, it kills all samples outside delta zero P. Since this functor is left exact by definition, it follows that it is isomorphic to the dual Zuckerman functor ZS hat. Let us now discuss Joseph's completion in the SL2 example. Recall that in decomposable objects in O0 for SL2 are LE, LS, PE, IE, and TE, up to isomorphism. First, we claim that JS kills LE. This follows from the observation that L from delta S to LE is zero because the G homomorphisms from delta S to any V tensor LE are equal to zero. So delta S is a simple infinite dimensional module, while V tensor LE is a simple finite dimensional module for any finite dimensional module V. Next we claim that GS applied to delta S is equal to delta E. So this follows from the observation that L from delta S to delta S is equal to L from delta E to delta E by Costan's problem for Vermeer modules. So the image in Harishandra by modules of delta S under L delta S is the same as the image there of delta E under L delta E. So when we go back to category O, we get this isomorphism. Our next observation is that the image of delta E under JS is isomorphic to delta E. So delta E is Joseph complete. Proof. So what we need to prove is that L delta S delta E is equal to L of delta E delta E. Of course, the map from delta S to delta E gives rise to the inclusion from L delta E delta E to L delta S delta E. So we only need to compare multiplicities between these two Harish and Rabbi modules, and they are equal because we only have two indecomposable projective functors, delta theta E and theta S. And if you take G homes from delta S to theta E delta E, which is delta E, this is one dimensional, and G homes from delta E to theta E delta E, this is delta E, again, one dimensional. Now G homes from delta S to theta S delta E, so this is PS and this is one dimensional. They're also equal to the G homes from delta E to theta S delta E. So there is one home from delta E, one dimensional home from delta E to PS. So this implies that this inclusion is in fact an isomorphism. Okay, let us go further with our SL2 example. Next we claim that GS of TE is isomorphic to TE. So what we need to prove, we need to prove that the Harishan Rabbi by module L delta S TE is isomorphic to the Harishan Rabbi by module L delta E TE. Again, we have the natural inclusion 
L delta E T E embeds into L delta S T E. And we need to compare the multiplicities for the projective functors theta E and theta S. So here we have the G home from delta S to T E, which is one dimensional, and the G home from delta E to T E is also one dimension. The G home from delta S to theta S T E, so this is T E plus T E, this is two dimensional, and similarly the G home from delta E to theta S T E, so this is T E plus T E, this is also two dimensional. Finally, the most non-trivial property is that the Joseph completion of the injective module IE is isomorphic to the simple module LS. So first of all, as we already discussed, we have the exact sequence that IE factored by the maximal as finite submodule LE is mapped to the Joseph completion GS of IE. In particular, this is a non-zero module. So applying the left exact functor GS to the short exact sequence LE is a submodule of IE and the quotient is LS. We get the, fo the following embedding. So GS kills LE, as we already know. So GS of IE embeds into GS of LS. But this we already computed, this is delta E. So GSIE is a non-zero submodule of delta E, so it can only be LS or delta E. So in order to prove that it is really LS, we need to prove that it cannot be isomorphic to delta E. And for this, we compare the two Harishian rabbi modules L delta S I E and L delta E delta E. So this is the Harishian rabbi module which corresponds to delta E, and this is the Harishian rabbi module which corresponds to G S I E. And we note that for the projective functor C E, we have different dimensions of the home spaces. So the G home from delta S to theta E I E is zero dimensional, while G home from delta E to theta E delta E is one dimension. Therefore, these two Harishian rabbi modules are not isomorphic. This implies our claim. With this example in, at hand, we can now explicitly compare Joseph's and Enright's completion for SL2. First of all, in both cases, we have exact sequence that the dual Zuckerman functor ZS hat is a subfunctor of the identity and then this maps to both and writes completion ES and Joseph's completion JS. And here are the values of these two functors on indecomposable modules. So and writes completion sends LE to zero, LS, PE, and IE to PE, and TE to TE. Joseph's completion sends LE to zero, LS and PE to PE, IE to LS, and TE to TE. And already here, we can see that if we take Joseph's completion twice, we get LE sends to zero, LS, PE, and IE sent to PE, and TE sent to TE. So if we just compare values on modules, the square of Joseph's completion gives us the same outcome as Enright's completion. Joseph's completion can be also easily defined on other integral blocks. Let lambda be an integral a dominant weight, but now may be singular. Consider the corresponding block O lambda of O. Then we have the corresponding category H lambda 0, 1, infinity of Harishian rabbi modules. And the bernstein gilfand equivalence says that this category is equivalent to O lambda, while the same functors taking L from delta E to blank and tensoring over UG with delta E. So these two functors are mutually inverse equivalence of categories. So here delta E is a module from O0, not from O lambda. So now we can define Joseph's completion of O lambda exactly in the same way as we did for the principal block. So this is L delta S blank 
followed by tensoring with delta E. So it is very easy to see that in the particular in example of SL2, we get the JS of delta minus one, so this is a unique simple projective injective tilting module, is equal to delta minus one. And we also have that all regular integral blocks are equivalent, so the Joseph's completion there can be defined in this way, or looking at the dominant Verma module in that block, you will get the same funnel term, up to isomorphism, of course. Next, let us discuss how Joseph's completion uh, interacts with projective functors. Theorem due to Joseph, JS commutes with projective functors and natural transformations between them. In other words, it functorially commutes with all projective functors. Sketch of the proof. If you consider the category H00 infinity infinity of Harishan Rabbi modules, on this category, we have both left projective functor theta w left and right projective functor theta w right. These two different groups of functors functorially commute with each other as they act on different sides of bimodules. Left projective functors preserve H001 infinity and correspond to the action of projective functors on the category O via the bernstein gilfand equivalence. Right projective functors do not preserve H001 infinity because they spoil the scalar right action of the center. However, right shuffling and co-shuffling functors preserve H001 infinity. Now let us observe that delta S is both left and right shuffling of delta E considered as objects in H001 infinity. This implies that JS, defined via the contravariant variable, is isomorphic to the right co-shuffling functor on H001 infinity. And of course, this functorially commutes with left projective functors since it acts on the different sides of bimodules. Now we can compute Joseph's completion of some Verma modules. So we claim that Joseph's completion of delta S is equal to delta E, always. We already saw this in SL2, and the proof is the same. This follows from Costan's problem for Verma modules. We seen that L delta S delta S, this Harishan Rabbi module, is isomorphic to L delta E delta E always. Next analogy with SL2, we claim that Joseph's completion of delta E is isomorphic to delta E. Again, the proof is the same. We have that L delta E delta E embeds into L delta S delta E, so we only need to compare multiplicities of simples in the adjoint versions of this Harishan Ra by modules. So it remains to prove that for any projective functor theta w, the g home from delta s to theta w delta e is isomorphic to the g home from delta e to theta w delta e. So let us apply the self-equivalence, the right adjoint of and right's completion es to the left-hand side of this equality. So this functor sends delta S to delta E and creates no other homology. It really sends the Verma module delta S to the projective module delta E, and that's it in the derived category. Since theta W delta E is a projective module and ES is the identity on projective modules, the position zero homology of RES applied to theta W delta E is theta w delta e. Of course, this functor creates a lot of other homology on the right of the zero position because it's a right derived functor. However, since delta e is a projective module, homing from a projective module gives us exactly the homology in its position. So the zero homology. So other homological positions do not matter in the computation of the home 
And so we get exactly the right hand side. So this proves this claim. So now we are ready to describe what Joseph's completion does to projective modules. Corollary, the functor JS restricts to the category of projective objects in O, and this restriction is isomorphic to the identity functor. To get this, we combine the following observations. Joseph's completion of delta E is delta E. GS functorially commutes with projective functors. Any projective module is an image of delta E under a projective functor. Any homomorphism between projective modules comes from the evaluation of a natural transformation between the corresponding projective functors. So combining these observations together, we get the claim of the corollary. Let us now compute Joseph's completion of some dual Verma modules. We denote by KW the Koshaflin functor associated to the element W in W. We claim that KW commutes with JS for any W. Of course, it is enough to consider the case W is equal to T, a simple reflection. Since both KT and JS are left exact, and KT is the kernel of a morphism between projective functors, the claim follows from the fact that JS functorially commutes with projective functors. Our next observation is that JS applied to nabla E is isomorphic to nabla S. As nabla E is injective, we have the short exact sequence of Harishian Rabai modules, zero goes to L delta EP to nabla E. So this goes to L from delta E to nabla E. This goes to L from delta S to nabla E. This goes to zero. So the middle term of this sequence by BG equivalence is nabla E. So we get that nabla E surjects onto GS of delta E. And we know that the kernel of this surjection must be the maximal S finite part of nabla E, which is ZS hat of nabla E, which is exactly this part. So we get exactly that GS of nabla E is nabla S. Consequence, if W is in W, such that SW is greater than W, then GS of nabla W is equal to nabla S W. Proof. So if you want to compute GS of nabla W, we write nabla W as KW of nabla E. Now we can swap KW and GS, and we just computed the GS of nabla E is nabla S. Now we can write nabla S as KS of nabla W, and because of our condition as W is greater than W, we get KSW of nabla E, which is nabla S. W. Now we can describe Joseph's completion of all Verma modules. First of all, we know that JS applied to the antidominant Verma module delta W0 is isomorphic to delta S W0. The proof is very similar to the previous one. We write delta W0 as KW0 applied to nabla E. So now we can swap KW0 and JS. So we get here nabla S. So nabla S is KS of nabla E. And so we can write this as KW0 as W0 times KW0 applied to nabla E. So the later gives us nabla W0, which is the same as delta W0, and applying KW0 as W0, produces delta S W0. We can now use this to prove the following. Joseph's completion JS applied to delta W is equal to delta W if SW is greater than W, and it is equal to delta SW if SW is smaller than W. So denote by X the element W0 times W. Then delta W is equal to KX applied to delta W0. Applying JS and using the JS and KX commute, 
we get the module Kx applied to delta S W0. Now the claim follows by recalling that Kt acts on delta Y in the following way. It gives delta Y if Yt is greater than Y, and it gives delta Yt if Yt is smaller than Y, for any Y in W. Let us now look at powers of Joseph's completion. We have already observed that Js is a unique up to isomorphism left exact functor, which functorially commutes with projective functors and sends nabla E to nabla S. Now we claim that if we look at the image of nabla E under the power Js to the power I, we will get exactly Ks to the power I applied to nabla E. And this is valid for all i greater than or equal to zero. This follows directly from the fact that Ks nabla E is isomorphic to Js nabla E and that Ks and Js commute. So next, we observe that for i greater than or equal to zero, Ks to the power i applied to nabla E is isomorphic to nabla E if i is equal to zero, it's isomorphic to nabla S if i is equal to one, and it is isomorphic to the kernel of the natural projection of Is onto nabla S if I is greater than one. This is an easy computation which follows directly from the definition of the Koshaflin functor. Consequence, for I greater than one, Js to the power I is the unique up to isomorphism left exact functor which functorially commutes with projective functors and sends nabla E to the kernel of the natural surjection from Is to nabla S. So, of course, all powers of Js functorially commute with projective functors, and since they all send nabla E to the same module, they all are isomorphic and have this particular description. So one consequence of this is that the second power of Js is isomorphic to the third power of Js. Now we can compare Enright's and Joseph's completion. We claim that Enright's completion is isomorphic to the square of Joseph's completion. First of all, let us prove that Enright's completion is isomorphic to the composition of Joseph's completion followed by Enright's completion. To prove this lemma, we apply and write completion to the left exact sequence 0 goes to the dual Zuckerman, goes to the identity, goes to Joseph's completion. And we use that and write completion kills the dual Zuckerman functor. So we obtain a natural embedding of ES into ES after JS. Applying the projective functor theta W, to the surjection of nabla E onto nabla S, and this one is Js applied to nabla E, we get that any injective module surjects onto its image under Js. So here we use that Js commutes with theta W, so we can pass theta W through Js here. And of course, the kernel of this surjection is killed by ES from this sequence. So from the SL2 nature of ES, it follows that ES applied to I is isomorphic to ES applied to J JSI. And now the claim follows from left exact functors. So we have a natural embedding of left exact functors, which is an isomorphism on injective modules. So this must be an isomorphism. So now we can prove the theorem that ES is isomorphic to JS squared. So since the dual Zuckerman functor kills the Joseph's completion, we can evaluate this short exact sequence at Js, and the first term will be killed, so we will get an embedding of Js into Es after Js. So here we get here we had embedding of Es into Es after Js, 
Here we have an embedding of JS into ES after JS, and we know that this is isomorphic to ES. So GS is a subfunctor of ES. Evaluating once more, we get that GS square is also a subfunctor of ES. Comparing these embeddings on injectives, we get that this monomorphism is an isomorphism. The first consequence from the previous observation is that the functor ES functorially commutes with projective functors, because it's the second power of a functor which does this. The second observation is the description of right homology functors of JS. The claim is that Ri of JS is equal to zero if I is greater than one, and it's equal to the usual Zuckerman functor Zs if I is equal to one. And this is simply the other side analog of the description of homology of the core shuffling functors. So the Joseph's completion functor is the right co-shuffling functor. The consequence of this is that the right derived of ES, which is of course equal to the right derived of JS squared, is isomorphic to the square of the right derived of JS. In order to prove this, we need to show that JS sends injective objects to acyclic objects for JS. But we know that JS sends injectives to the quotient of the corresponding injective by the maximal S finite submodule, and from this description, we have that this outcome is acyclic for JS because its stop is antidominant and hence is killed by ZS. And from this, now we can derive that the right derived of JS is a self equivalence of dB O0. So this follows from the fact that its square is a self-equivalence of dB O0, as we know from the previous lecture. Next observation is the following theorem due to Joseph. Joseph's completion functors satisfy braid relations. Let W be an element in W with reduced expression W is equal to S1, S2, and so on, Sk. Using our interpretation of Joseph's completion as co-shufflings on the right-hand side, combining with how shuffling and co-shuffling functors act on Verma modules, we get that the composition JS1, JS2, and so on, JSK, can be described as taking L from delta W to blank, and then tensoring over UG to delta E. So we simply shuffle the delta E element in the first vari variable of L by W. And now the braid relations are clear because they correspond to the situation when W is the longest element in the rank two parabolic subgroup. So in particular, it follows that for an element W in W, we can define the corresponding Joseph's completion JW independent on the reduced expression of W. So we have an, an ambiguous definition for the functor JW. And using our description of the homology of Joseph's completion, we get that the right derived of JW is the composition of the corresponding right derived functors RJS1, RJS2, and so on. And this gives us another braid group action on the bounded derived category of O0. So let us also discuss one explicit example of completion of dual Verma modules for the algebra SL3. In the case of SL3, our indices are E, S, T, ST, TS, and W0. So here is a table of the modules Jx, nabla, y, where x and y are arbitrary elements in W. So the first row here contains all nablas, the dual Verma modules. And the table shows that we can start with these dual Verma modules and complete them with respect to S, T, then ST, TS, and W0. The interesting observations here are as follows. 
If we start from the dominant dual Verma module and complete it, we get all dual Verma modules. If you start with the anti-dominant dual Verma module, which is the same as anti-dominant Verma module, and complete it, we get all Verma modules. So the last column here consists of Verma modules. If you start with dual Verma modules and complete them with respect to W0, we get Verma modules. So the last row here consists of Verma modules. And so the module W0 appears here in each row and in each column once. And similarly, in each row and in each column, we have one module whose image in the Grotin-D group is equal to the image of the dominant Verma module. So here is one, 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 and here is one. So all this can be done explicitly. So let us finish with some questions for PhD students. Question number one, prove that functors of tensoring with delta E and with delta EP are isomorphic, considered as functors from the Harishian rabbi modules HI0 infinity to the category O0P. Question number two, find an example illustrating that JS and CT do not commute in general. Question number three, fill in all the details in the computation of JS delta W. Question number four, fill in all the details in the proof of JS squared is equal to ES. Hint, use the SL2 nature of ES. Question number five, describe Joseph's completion of dual Verma modules under the assumptions that SW is less than W. Thank you very much and see you next time.